Hi, we're no longer programming this video. We're going to go over the details of our question generation and question answering systems. We would start with question generation. In pre-process, we would first start filter out titles because they are not useful in question generation. We would then segment the uh, articles into sentences and tokens. We would keep down the post text, dependency parsing, and named entity text. We would also capture the subject uh, by tracking down and searching in the dependency tree. For example, in this sentence, the great enchanting power of music is un un unimaginable. We not only want to capture the w token, which is a subject in music, but also the words that describe it, or in other words, the children of it. And the last thing is that we would also keep uh, the index of root, subject, auxiliary verb, and ner to fix the inconsistencies of the index. Grammar transformation is to transform a sentence into a grammatically correct sentence. For There are mainly three cases. The first case is that there exists auxiliary verb. Uh, for example, the book is carried by Kim, is, is the auxiliary verb, we would put it in the front. The second case is that when the root slamma is B, uh, for example, the book is expensive, we would put it in the front. The last case is that uh, we need to create auxiliary verb like did, do, does. In the example, because it is in the past tense, we would create did and put it in the front and change the verb into a slamma form. Grammar transformation ensures us the grammatical correctness of a question. How do we know what type of questions we want to generate in the first place? For any sentence, we ask if it is qualified by any of the six types of questions here. So every sentence is qualified for yes-no question. And sentences that contains a non-person noun as a subject and a be verb is qualified for what question. If any R tells us the subject of the sentence is a person type, we can ask a who question. If we find time or location expressions in any R, we can use dependency tree to check if the time or location expression is part of the prepositional phrase describing the root verb. If so, we can then apply grammar transformation to ask a when or where question. We ask a why question if there is a keyword because in the sentence. The, we would ask what's before because and the expected answer is what's after because. We had a problem applying co-reference resolution, so we skipped five types of questions if the sentence has a pronoun subject. Although we are still able to ask a what question such that the pronoun subject is the expected answer. For example, it is a private university. We can still ask what is a private university without causing any confusion. We filter out all questions containing a pronoun before we move on to question evaluation. Once we have a list of questions, we evaluate them based on their length where we choose questions whose length lies in the middle of the distribution. Short questions lack context while long questions aren't concise. For question answering, we had the same pre-processing as question generation. After that, we had four main steps. First, we have question processing. We started by classifying the question into two types. The first type is yes or no questions. We used spacey to check the post tagging and lemma of the question to see if it starts with auxiliary words or special question words like can or do. Otherwise, we will check the first or first two words to see if it is a WH or how many questions. Our system focuses on the following six types. After that, we create a query by removing the stop words, question words, and punctuations. For example, for this question below, we only keep these three words. In article processing, we first conduct the information retrieval with back of words and TF-IDF to calculate the cosine similarity. We found that long sentences might be harder to match with given this method because they always have lower scores. To solve this problem, we extended our search matrix by also adding the shorter pieces of these sentences. After that, we rematch the top three answers in the original article to find the sentences in the complete context. Then we move on to advanced search to further filter the top three answers. First, we compare the cosine similarity scores. If all of them are too low, we return I can't understand your question. If the scores of the second and third answers are more than three standard deviations away from the first answers, we'll drop them because those will be statistically insignificant. For WH or how many questions, we also used NER text to check if the remaining answers have the desired answer entity, as shown in the list below. 
We also use dependency parsing to check the root of the question and see if it presents in the answer. For example, in this question, the desired answer type should be a location, which could be one of the three tags. We check the two answers and find that the first one has the desired type. In addition, it contains the root of the question. Lastly, we generate the answer based on question types. For yes or no questions, we used for now to convert the top one answer into a pool, which contains each token, their lemmas, and morphemes. Then we viewed all keywords in the question to see if any format of them presented in the answer pool without negations, such as antonym. For example, in the question below, because one word is missing, the answer will be no. For how many questions, we extracted the subject from the question and then checked in each of the three answers whether there is a cardinal entity modifying the subject. For other kind of questions, we return the reformatted top one answer.